Good morning, Pastor Ray here with the Daily Bread. God is good. Amen. Today is Monday and it is August 1st. And so uh, we are in the book of Acts. This is the Daily Bread. Uh, welcome. If you are new to this, we have uh, been working through the book of Acts. We are in chapter 24. Today we'll be reading verses 23 through 27. And uh, I want to talk to you about procrastination. Mm, any master procrastinators out there, right? Um, procrastination is when you have the ability to do something now, or maybe even you need to do it now, but you put it off till later, right? And a lot of people do that when it comes to God, right? With their relationship with Jesus and um, getting things right with the Lord, um, getting you back in their faith, showing up to church, amen, and uh, seeking God. And so many people put it off. They think, well, I'll just do it later, right? Um, but this thing you don't want to put off. You don't want to put it off because time gets wasted. And you never know what would happen if you were to respond to God right now. Amen. And so let's read this text and see what we can learn in the book of Acts chapter 24. Paul is uh, moving up and he's starting to have a witness to more and more and more prominent people um, in the Roman Empire. And so um, let's read this text and see what we can learn. It says this, But when Felix heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, When Lysias the commander comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and let him have liberty, and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit for him. And after some days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith of Christ. Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now, and when I have a convenient time, I will call for you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul that he might release him. Therefore he sent for him more often and conversed with him. But after two years, Portius Festus succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. All right, so here's our text. And um, Paul, is he's still in, in, in chains. You know, he's living his life that way. So two years, he's um, right here. He, two years, he's in jail, but he has freedom. He has liberty to preach the gospel. Hmm. Interesting, he's in jail, but he has freedom. Right? He's in jail, but he has freedom. Why? Because he's free in here. And he's free in here. Right? A lot of people have freedom and they can do whatever they want, but they're they're bound here and they're bound here. They're tormented, man. Listen. So he has this freedom to still preach the gospel. And then there's this man, Felix, who is the governor, and he hears Paul. God deals with him here. Right? Because God's dealings are not here. Everybody wants to say, well, I just need to know more of the Bible. No, you don't need to know more of the Bible. That's good to learn. But I bet that God is already speaking here, right? Because that's what counts. It's the heart. God goes past the mind and into the heart. The Word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting to the division of the soul and the spirit. And so God deals with, but you know what? A lot of times people are just like Felix. I know that I was when I was a young kid. You know, I didn't want to hear it. Right, but I responded. I got saved when I was 18. Someone came to my door, you know, telling me about Jesus. I didn't want to hear it. I had just finished smoking a joint, you know, I didn't want to hear about Jesus. But God went past here and went here because I knew I had a need in my life. And you know what? I thank God. I thank God that I didn't put it off. Who knows where I would have been today? Probably dead, probably in jail, or just a mess. But Jesus reached into my life at that time. And with just a simple, humble response, God did a miracle in my life. And so is the testimony of so many others. God reaches in, knocks on the door of the heart, and they open up and let him in. How about you today? God been knocking? Jesus been dealing with you about things in your life? I know many people, you know, they're just backslidden. They're away from the Lord. They're not where they need to be in God. And the Lord is knocking, saying, come on, it's time to come home. Listen, don't put it off. Don't put it up. There's no telling where we're going to go with the craziness that's happening in the world today. Come on. Today is the day of salvation, the scripture says. Not next week, not next month. We're not putting things off. We're getting saved and we're serving the Lord. And I want to encourage you in that. 
You might procrastinate on things. I procrastinate. One thing I don't do is I don't push God away. No, run to Him instead. Come on. What have you got to lose? Really, honestly. What have you got to lose? It's all gain. For to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. This life is passing by. So I want to encourage you today. Don't procrastinate. Don't put off Jesus any longer. Come on, get saved. Right where you are. Pray. Seek Him. Tell Him, Lord, please do a work in here. And then obey. Obey what the Spirit speaks to you. And see what God does. Amen. And so, unashamed, unafraid. The Lord bless you today. In Jesus' name. Amen.